ladies and gentlemen, time for our double tier list again, where we're going to be judging each of the healers based on how much fun they are to play. That's going to be the tier list on the left hand side. And then how hard are they going to be in the war within? That's going to be the tier list on the right hand side. With all things considered, including the new hero talents, let's get started. Starting with the Mist Reaver Monk, it's been a blast to play this in Mythic Plus, keeping in mind that the raid build is completely different and plays in a completely different way. The rotation and the gameplay style are a lot of fun, especially considering the upcoming hero talents, specifically Conduit of the Celestials. Everything got even better with the most recent talent changes, so this goes easily into the S tier when we talk about fun. As per difficulty, there were some improvements there as well, with a few buttons and interactions removed with the latest changes. However, there are a few downsides. You need to rely on damage in order to heal your party in Mythic Plus, you're a melee spec and if you're forced out of melee, or if you're in one of the short windows where you have no cooldown buttons to press, things could get a little bit hectic, but with a little bit of practice, you learn how to handle those situations and I think it's fair to put it into the A tier in terms of difficulty. This makes the Mist River Monk pretty solid choice as it ranks pretty high in both charts, fun and difficulty. Holy Paladin is another class with a very nice gameplay style, awesome class fantasy and the Herald of the Sun Hero talents are also a blast to play with. However, this class history was turbulent in Dragonflight, there were a lot of volatile changes. And that trend seems to continue as we speak. The changes cause major shifts into the gameplay style, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. But because of this uncertainty, I'm going to put the Holy Paladin into the A tier in terms of fun, just short of S. When it comes to difficulty, another melee class, supposedly, as you have to cast every now and then, and you have to do that on top of managing two different resources, mana and holy power. There's also a little bit of button bloat, and then there's some very specific micromanagement of the Blessing of Summer and the Lightsmith new hero talents if you decide to play with these, so I think it's fair to put it into the B tier in terms of difficulty. So it's still a pretty solid choice, it ranks above average in both charts and assuming that Blizzard is going to do a good job with the tuning, it might be one of the most powerful healing classes in the War Within, definitely worth your consideration. Preservation Evoker, very dynamic toolkit with unique gameplay style having a little bit of everything. Empowered spells, big instant cast, hots, frontals, ramp abilities, crazy movement stuff like VE and rescue. It could easily be S tier, but the short range and the chaos that happens if you play it in pugs definitely puts it a little bit lower. When it comes to fun, I'm gonna put it in A with the agreement that if you play it in an organized group, it feels really good and it could easily be S tier, but if you play it mostly in pugs, it could be really bad, probably down to C. As per difficulty, all the mentioned abilities have different interactions between them that are very hard to micromanage. The short range, the positioning that we mentioned, and also the fact that most of your abilities have short cooldowns that you also need to micromanage makes it one of the harder healers to play. So in the difficulty chart, we're gonna put this down to C, making the evoker really nice class to play if you like the challenge, especially in pucks. Discipline Priest is another fun spec with unique gameplay style where you have to do damage in order to heal and if done correctly it feels like a breeze, so the fun component is there. We also have to mention that the Void Weaver hero talents are amazing and they probably have the most stunning visuals of all the hero talents in the game right now. But I'm also going to mention that there are some very unfun moments where people are taking unexpected damage or you didn't pre ram correctly before the big AoE and you simply don't have the tools to handle situations like that, which happens a lot in parks. So for that reason alone, I think it's fair to put this also in the A section of the fun chart. When it comes to difficulty, we have to mention that this is probably the class with the least amount of buttons, which is a huge plus. However, it takes a lot of skill, 
resilience, and it's a steep learning curve to learn how to spread your adornments and then rely on your damage to heal instead of hard spamming flash heal, for example. And when we add on top of that the lack of many big cooldowns that will help you handle unexpected situations, the lack of interrupt, the dispel profile which definitely does not suit the first season in the war within for the priest, I think it's fair to say that this is also one of the harder classes to master, so we're gonna put it down to C right next to the evoker. Putting it basically at the same boat, it's a fun class to play, but it has a steep learning curve and it takes a lot of skill to master. Holy Priest is a spec that relies on casting your Holy Word spells and then your gameplay revolves around managing their usage and reducing their remaining cooldown as much as you can so they're back up to use for dire situations. It's relatively pleasant gameplay style but it doesn't have this big vibe or oomph when you press your wings as a paladin for example or ascendance as resto shaman. It's definitely more fun to play in raid compared to mythic plus and it's probably going to own there. But it's also worth mentioning that from the two hero talent specs that are available, Oracle is much less fun to play which kind of limits your options. Based on that, I'm gonna put the fun factor for Holy Priest down to B. As for difficulty, I kinda wanna put it in A because it's relatively straightforward to learn and play, but it does struggle a little bit in AoE healing in M+, especially if you don't manage your cooldowns correctly. We have to mention again the lack of interrupt and the dispel profile, which is simply going to make you brute force heal some situations that other healers have it pretty easy, so I guess we can put this down into the B when it comes to difficulty. That puts the Holy Priest in the middle of the pack for both charts, so definitely consider that if you decide to try it for a first time in the War Within. Restoration Druid, I'm gonna start backwards here and declare this as probably the hardest class to play when it comes to healer because it relies on HODs that you need to pre-ramp and manage correctly and on top of that you have to switch forms and use abilities in different shapes in order for example to interrupt, which leads to a lot of micromanagement and of course button bloat. So I think it's fair to put this down to the F tier when it comes to difficulty. When it comes to fun, if you enjoy the challenge and if you like shape shifting and cat weaving to do damage and healing, if your brain is wired to work with halts and if you like pre ramps instead of direct healing spells, then this is easily S tier for you. But if you think that there were too many ifs in those statements, then you would be correct and many people are likely not going to fall in O or any of these categories, so overall I guess it's fair to put this into the C, but that position is going to vary for every single person depending on how much they like or dislike the class. With that said, we can conclude that Rest to Druid is definitely not a cup of tea for everyone, probably not the best pick if you just want to start and try it out in the war within, but you never know, you might vibe and like the class more than anything else. Saving the best for last, Restoration Shaman caught me bias here, but it felt amazing playing this right now, especially with the totemic hero talents, with the insta-cast healing rain and the automatic chain heals every time you drop a totem, all on top of a toolkit that allows you to handle every kind of unexpected situation in pugs, awesome cooldowns in the form of Spirit Link Totem and Ascendance, this is definitely the most fun I had playing a spec probably ever since Vesper Totem, so that's a very easy S tier when it comes to fun for the rest of Shaman. When it comes to difficulty it's definitely not a hard class to learn, but it does have a bit too many buttons, interactions to worry about with all the totems and extra talents that you can pick. But it's also worth mentioning that you can change your talent builds in a way to reduce the button bloat. And considering that the dispel profiles for the dungeons in season 1 with curse and poison suit the shaman pretty well, I'm gonna put it into the S tier for the easiness as well. That makes it the best class with ratio between fun and difficulty. And here you can see the final tier list, the fun one on the left and the difficulty one on the right. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below, I'll see you guys in the next video, now get out of here.